Greetings everyone and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. In recent days a decision was rendered by a court in Germany which is just unbelievable. It's a decision by the Courts of Appeal in the city of Cologne in Germany saying that the circumcision of a child or a baby is a crime and that doctors from now on can be prosecuted for performing such a procedure even when the parents ask him to do that. Now before you shake your head in unbelief that a country like Germany of all countries would make such a scandalous and outrageous decision I'd like to inform you about what some of the newspapers and magazines have reported as to what actually happened here. Here's an article by the Associated Press dated June 26 saying this a German court has ruled that circumcising young boys on religious grounds amounts to bodily harm even if parents consent to the procedure. Cologne State Court said the child's right to physical integrity trumps freedom of religion and parents' rights. The case involved a doctor accused of carrying out a circumcision of a four-year-old that led to medical complications. The doctor was acquitted, however, and prosecutors said they won't appeal in this case. See, but from now on, it's different. Up until now, the doctor could say, oh, I didn't know that this was a crime because there was no law prohibiting it. Now, with that court decision, the situation has drastically changed, as those articles, as I will quote them to you, point out. So this article goes on to say, the president of Germany's Central Council of Jews Dieter Graumann calls the ruling unprecedented and insensitive, urging the country's parliament to clarify the legal situation to protect religious freedom against attacks. Graumann said the circumcision of newborn Jews has been practiced for thousands of years and every country in the world respects this religious right. Muslims also circumcise young boys, even though at a later age, while many parents requested on medical or health grounds. The state court's ruling creates a tricky legal situation for doctors who perform the procedure on parents' orders. Unlike female circumcision, there is no law prohibiting it and the ruling isn't binding for other courts, however. It sets a precedent that would be taken into account by other German courts when ruling on similar issues. Now, it's possible that that Court of Appeals decision is going to be reversed by the highest constitutional court. But the fact that a Court of Appeal would make such a decision, and the fact, my friends, that many Germans have already commented and agreed with that decision, is mind-boggling, it's dangerous, it's extremely critical to understand. The New York Times wrote on June 26, 2012, a German court in Cologne ruled on Tuesday that circumcising young boys represents grievous bodily harm, a decision that could have significant repercussions for religious groups. The president of the Central Council of Jews in Germany condemned the decision as an unprecedented and dramatic intrusion on the self-determination of religious communities and called on the German parliament to pass legislation. The case centered on a four-year-old boy whose Muslim parents had him circumcised by a doctor, which led to medical complications. Although both Muslims and Jews circumcise infant boys as a religious practice, and many other people do it for health reasons, the court found that the child's fundamental right to bodily integrity was more important than the parents' rights. My friends, when I read that, and please excuse me if I sound overly dramatic, I thought of legislation passed in the Third Reich, in Nazi Germany. I couldn't help drawing that comparison. This article goes on to say, according to the courts, the religious freedom would not be unduly impaired because a child could later decide whether to have the circumcision. That is utter nonsense. You see, when we go back to the Bible, as I will do in a moment, we will see that circumcision has to take place when the child is eight days old, not later. Now, I understand many Muslims circumcise their children later based on the Quran, but according to the Bible, it has to happen on the eighth day. Of course, Jewish leaders, the article goes on to say, furiously condemns the decision. The decision by the court places an intolerable burden 
on the free exercise of religion by Jews and also by Muslims who practice male circumcision as part of their religious faith. Abraham Foxman, the Anti-Defamation League's national director in New York, said in a statement. While the ruling did not appear to have specific anti-Semitic intent, Mr. Foxman said, its effect is to say Jews are not welcome and Muslims are not welcome either. Holm Putzke, a criminal law expert at the University of Passau, told the German news agency that the ruling was not binding for other courts but could send a welcome signal because that guy is all for prohibiting circumcision. It goes on to say, after the knee-jerk outrage has faded away, hopefully a discussion will begin about how much religiously motivated violence against children a society is ready to tolerate, he said. Now, I want to give you another article, this time by the Jewish press, which had this to say on June 26. A Cologne district court ruled on Tuesday that parents may not have their sons circumcised for religious reasons. The so ruling has angered Muslims and Jews. Non-medical circumcision. What they mean by that is, if you have not a medical reason in a particular case to circumcise your child. So, non-medical circumcision is a quote-unquote serious and irreversible interference in the integrity of the human body, the court declared essentially criminalizing religious circumcisions performed by Jews and Muslims. The court now considers circumcision a crime of bodily harm. The court decided that a legal guardian's authority, so let's say the parents, over a child does not allow them to subject the child to the procedure. The court also rejected the notion that religious freedom which is protected by law in Germany, should permit a guardian to make such decisions for the children in their care. And on and on it goes. You see, my friends, I consider this to be extremely dangerous. Now, let me just say that from a Christian standpoint, and we all should understand that, a Christian is no longer obligated to circumcise his or her children or to be circumcised him or herself. That was a great debate which took place in the New Testament church and in Acts chapter 15 this was discussed and this was decided by the apostles, the apostle Paul, the apostle James, the apostle Peter, that it was not necessary to continue with the practice of circumcision because the big debate at the time was you have to become circumcised in order to become a member of the church of God. So it is no longer necessary for religious reasons to do so. And Paul makes this very clear. Paul was saying in his letters that if you think you have to be circumcised, physically circumcised, in order to be able to inherit the kingdom of God, in order to be able to inherit salvation, then Jesus Christ has died for you in vain because the whole idea was circumcision is no longer a necessary requirement for you to obtain access to the kingdom of God. Having said that, it is, on the other hand, not prohibited in the Bible to become circumcised. It has become now an individual decision of the parents for the children. But if they do it, they should do it, of course, in line with how the Bible prescribes circumcision in the Old Testament. And that is on the eighth day, as I already said. After Paul had made it very clear that circumcision wasn't necessary any longer, he nevertheless went ahead and circumcised Timothy. Now, Timothy was the child of a Greek father and a Jewish mother, so he wasn't circumcised as a child, so he was circumcised by Paul later because Timothy was to be used as an instrument to go to the Jews to declare to them Jesus Christ, the work and the way to salvation. So, therefore, he was circumcised. So, Paul did it, making very clear it was not to be prohibited. A worldly institution like the court in Cologne coming in here and doing away with this tradition saying it is now a prohibited procedure, a criminal procedure, it's outrageous. And I cannot believe that those judges over there can even sit on the bench and making those ridiculous decisions. But you see, my friends, the whole idea even, even goes further. Now, some, of course, circumcised because of health reasons, saying it's kind of a health law, and so therefore you need to circumcise your children. Now, that is not correct either, 
because you don't read anything about circumcision prior to Abraham. And then Paul would have never done away with a health law, if it was actually a health law given by God. See, he would have violated a law of God, which he would have never done. You see, circumcision was only a very temporary procedure, and was meant to be such a temporary procedure, like some of the other rituals, like the sacrifices, were supposed to be temporary procedures, were no longer necessary when Jesus Christ died for us. Nevertheless, what we find is that the Jews will again bring sacrifices in the near future in Jerusalem. The Bible makes this very clear. But the Bible makes it also very clear that a very charismatic leader, a political and military leader, and his armies will invade the Middle East and will then stop those sacrifices with violence, will stop them, will prevent the Jews from bringing those animal sacrifices. Did you know that this leader who is clearly identified in the Bible as the beast in the book of Revelation, as the king of the north in the book of Daniel, as the king of Assyria in the book of Isaiah and in other places, that this is a person of German or Austrian descent. Now, when you read something like a court in Cologne prohibiting circumcision because it is now a criminal act, and then thinking that the Bible tells you that a German or Austrian leader will ultimately, with a European army, invade the Middle East and prevent the Jews from sacrificing animals, perhaps with the same kind of rationale which those German judges have now just used to criminalize circumcision, then I think it's high time for us to wake up then I think we should realize that we are marching along and marching on when it comes to biblical prophecy being fulfilled. And so whether or not this decision, this ridiculous and stupid decision by the court in Cologne will be overturned by the German Constitutional Court, the point is the fact that this is even possible that a German court with German judges could already make such a decision and is being welcomed by apparently a large number of people who have been riding in, whether from the left or the right or the middle, that should really make us think. And I believe, my friends, when we realize this, we should also realize that we are perhaps much further along in the fulfillment of biblical prophecies as they are finding their culmination. It's a time of what the Bible calls the Great Tribulation, just prior to Christ's return, that we might be much further along than we might have realized before. So thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. <laughs>